If you have your Bibles, turn with me, if you will, to the book of Mark, the 15th chapter. Now I'm going to start at the 33rd verse. When you found it, if you will, please stand to your feet for the reading of God's Word. Let me say that I'm honored to have this opportunity and I thank God for His mercy and His grace that He shed upon me. Hallelujah. Mark 15, 33. Now I'm going to read through the 39th verse. <coughs> it says, <coughs> And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, <laughs> which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood by when they heard it, said, Behold, he calleth Elias. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar, and put it on a reed, and gave him the drink, saying, Let alone, let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice, and gave up the ghost. <laughs> and the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Stretch your hands this way, if you will. Heavenly Father, God, I need your anointing. God, I need your presence. I need your power. God, I'm just the best for Lord, heal me with your words that you would have spoken here tonight. God, move me. God, I'm asking you to open our eyes and our ears to receive all that you have for us. Oh, God, let your anointing and your power and your spirit, God, speak to our hearts. And indeed, Lord, to our very soul, God, and teach us, lead us out, not make us and guide us from your word. Church lives in the blessing in the holy name of Jesus. And the church will say, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I'll talk to you for a little while tonight about a place of holiness. A place of holiness. Now we know that. When Jesus was crucified, there was a physical, literal fifth temple. And we know that this is so because we find that, that before Jesus was crucified, He made a scourge uh, of some ropes and, and, and beat the, the sellers and stuff and told them, said, you made my, uh, my father's house supposed to be a house of prayer, but you made it into a den of thieves. And we know that He, he threw them out of the temple. Amen? But before this time, ever since the time that God delivered them from the land of Egypt, and as they were traveling, God began to give them a, 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 a template, if you will, a, 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 a architectural, what do you call the thing, a drawing of the way that the temple was supposed to be. And the temple that God had set out before them was not made with gold, it was not made with silver, but it was made out of goat skins, it was made out of badger skins, it was made out of skins, it was made of the, the altar and things were made out of, out of gold, and some of the, the, the letters and the things, the articles of the, the temple were made out of gold, but the, the temple itself was laid out in, in, in a fashion that God himself 
self-designed. Now, as I understand it, in the middle of this compound, there was the temple was set up. And the outside, of, there was the outside of the temple, or the, the tabernacle, there was the, the inside part where the, where the, the uh, animal sacrifices were made. And then there was a third part which was called by God Himself the Holy of Holies. Now, it, the outside of the tabernacle was where the animals were kept. It's where the people gathered together and, and came to worship God. But if you, if you think about it, what got me to thinking about this whole thing was that the outside of the temple, tabernacle or the temple, however you want to phrase it, was a place that was reserved for those that were not of the tribe of Israel, it was reserved for those that were not cleansed to go. They could not enter into the actual tabernacle itself because how many of you know that God is a holy God and He will not tolerate sin in the camp. But I'm telling you there's a lot of churches tonight that need to understand that God is sick and tired and God is fed up with sin in the tabernacle. But yet, but they allow it in, and if they even invite it to come in, so that the, the coffers might be filled. Amen. But the outside of the tabernacle or the temple is what I consider the sin nature, spiritually speaking. We have a temple where we worship God in our heart, in our minds. We have this. this in the spirit. But the outside, the Bible says that, that when Jesus comes, he says the outside is going to be the dogs and the sorcerers and all of that. And, and it's a place that the sin nature dwells. Can I tell you that when you get the tabernacle cleaned up and when you get inside the tabernacle, then the old things of the world that we used to live in, the old things that we used to do, they will disappear from view, but they will disappear from our hearts and our minds and the thing that we used to do we will not do anymore why? because once we give our heart and our life to God we came out from the sin nature, we came out the old man passed away and the new man came in and we entered into the tabernacle of a holy God we entered into a tabernacle of a mighty God we entered in to the tabernacle of a saving God. We enter into the tabernacle of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But outside is a sin nature. <laughs> outside of the tabernacle in Galatians 5 19 says outside is adultery, is fornication, is uncleanness, it's lasciviousness. It's idolatry. It's witchcraft. It's hatred. It's very intimidation. Right? Strife. We have the whole list. It's outside the camp. And it's waiting for us to destroy us. The Bible says that the enemy is like a roaring lion, walking, seeking whom he may devour. And it hunts that he wants to devour is you and it's me without the camp. It's in, outside of the camp. It's no place to be. We need the safety of the tabernacle of the living God. Quit playing the man outside the camp. Get back to inside the tabernacle. Yes, hallelujah. Outside of death, murder, drunkenness, revelation, And such like. Of the which I tell you before, 
as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Yes. Outside the camp, <laughs> we were once outside that camp. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. I was miserable outside the camp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> outside the camp was filled. Everywhere. Outside the camp, outside the tabernacle was the dirty, stinking animals. Outside of the tabernacle was sin abounding. Sin that has no shame. Sin that was proud to be sin and, and, and joy knows that would sin along with outside of the tabernacle is a place of sin. And I was not happy. The devil had me blinded into thinking that I was happy. The devil called me, boy, you're living high now. The truth is, I could not have lived any lower because the lie, lie is inside the tabernacle of God. You'll not find happiness outside of the camp. You'll not find joy outside of the tabernacle. You'll not find peace outside the tabernacle because outside of the tabernacle is strife. Outside of the tabernacle is death. Yes. You cannot find happiness outside of the tabernacle. Oh. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Outside of the tabernacle. We don't belong there. In the tabernacle, where the temple, you walked through the curtains or the doors or however, to get to the inside of the tabernacle. And there was an altar. There was a place for burning the incense. There was a place for the lamps. Inside was where the people, the ordinary people, I don't even like that term, but the people could come to come and worship God. But they could only worship in a limited amount of ways. See, the Levites were chosen to be the ministers. They were chosen to, to give, to offer the sacrifices. But the people would come into the, the, into the, the part of the congregation and they would bring their sacrifices and they would lay their, their head on and, and they would be slain and, and, and the sacrifice would be brought in. But inside of the tent of the tabernacle of the congregation was not where the power of God was. You understand what I'm saying? The real, true power, and I understand that the power of God in God is everywhere. But in this particular instance of where I'm telling you about in the tabernacle of the congregation, there was power of God, yes, but it was not the genuine, it was not the full fledged power of the living God. It was a place where they congregated together and they came together to offer up sacrifices. And it puts me in mind of a lot of churches today where they come in and they come together and they even may worship God, but they, they, they lack the power. They're looking for the power and it seems like they don't know that they're very close to the power of the living God beyond their wildest dreams, but yet they don't understand that they have to, to, to accept this, this, this uh, uh, power. The, con the, the tabernacle of the congregation had people that were not ceremonially clean enough 
to go into the Holy of Holies. They were the kind of people that could serve God in a limited capacity, but not to the full extent that the priest could. So, all they could do was to offer the sacrifice and what the sacrifice could do was not to remove their sins but simply to cover them for the space of one year. And then the next year they would have to bring another sacrifice to cover it for another year. Yeah. Ain't that about the length of time that you know a lot of your Christian folks go to church about once a year, maybe they go on Easter, maybe they go on their birthday, maybe they go on Mother's Day or Father's Day, but they seem like they call themselves a Christian, but they only come into the congregation, they only come into the tabernacle of the congregation about once a year, but they want to tell you how holy and how sanctified and how great they really are, and they don't have a clue that they are blind naked and about to die and on their way to the devil's hell. That's right. Yeah. Amen. True. Mm -hmm. Bless Lord. And then, thank God, there was the Holy of Holies. Bless Him. But in the tabernacle of the congregation mm -hmm. is where the carnal physical works took place were performed. It's where the worship, the carnal worship took place. This is where and spiritually speaking this is where today Christians who just barely a little more than lukewarm lives. Who don't want to get too close because he's afraid he'll have to give up something. He would rather Maintain than advance mm -hmm. any closer to the Holy of Holies. Come on. Bless you. This is the space. And this is the space nowadays that, that most people who call themselves Christians prefer to live. Mm -hmm. They've got just enough of God to where they think they have some fire insurance. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. They, they live just close enough to God that if they died, they, they had a reasonable hope of, of maybe making it through to the portals of glory, but yet they don't want enough of God. They don't love God enough that they want to draw any nearer to the Holy of Holies. In my spirit, I see them coming through the back door of the tabernacle of the congregation and hugging up the wall and kind of scooting around and staying as far away from the power of God as they can possibly stay and not realizing that they don't know what they're missing. Yes. In the tabernacle of the congregation is where the satisfied people abide. They don't want to go. They don't want to get any closer to God. They're satisfied. Can I tell you, I'm not the, I'm not the uh, psalmist uh, when he said, uh, glory to God, he said, I shall be satisfied when I wait with thy likeness of God. Until then, I will not be satisfied. I want to see Jesus. I do. And I want to be like my Lord and my Savior. I want to enter into the Holy of Holies. Yes, amen. But there are many that just want to hang around in the tabernacle of congregation because this is where the lazy Christians want to stay. Oh, I can't believe that preacher wants us to go visit. I can't believe that preacher asked us to come back in the floors to clean the church up. I can't believe that preacher asked us to do this or that preacher asked us to do that. Can I tell you? 
that when you get a zeal for the Almighty God, you'll do whatever you can do to, to further the kingdom of God. Yes. Who is it that said, I would rather be just a doorman in the house of God and to own all the riches in the world? That's me. I would rather, oh my Lord and my God, let me just enter into His presence and I shall be satisfied. Let me come into His glory and then I shall be happy. It's where the satisfied abide. It's where the lazy abide. This is a place in the tabernacle of the congregation. Here's where the people came and, and, and they drop a little bit of money and, 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 a, uh, and an offering plate. And this is where a lot of them think uh, that they're going to buy their way into heaven. Can I tell you, it doesn't work. Uh, God owns all the cattle on a thousand hills. Uh, he owns the hills. Uh, he owns the gold up under the hills. What good do you think uh, your two or three dollars in the offering plate is going to do? Uh, it's not going to buy your way into heaven. But in the tabernacle of the congregation, uh, it's where those uh, that the Christians are that just want to put a little dollar in the offering plate and, and make some new business contacts and, and plan a little party here and a little they're not really interested in approaching the holy of holies. They just want to see and to be seen. Yes. And a lot of people are satisfied to be in the congregation. Tabernacle of the congregation. But can I tell you, in the tabernacle of the congregation, there's no spiritual growth. Even back in the old times in, in Israel, they did, the, they did their sacrifices, but we read nowhere of their spiritual growth. We read where their sins were blotted out for the next year, but we don't read of where th there was any spiritual growth in the tabernacle of the congregation. Amen? That's right. It used to be the place to be, but it's no longer good enough in God's eyes. God wants us to either enter into the Holy of Holies or get out. Oh, now wait a minute, preacher. Don't you be saying that. Can I tell you, the Bible itself says it. The Bible says you'll serve God or, or, or the devil. The Bible says you cannot serve God and man, but you'll love one and you'll hate the other. What does that mean? That means that God wants you either into the, all the way, come into the Holy of Holies or get out. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says that if you're lukewarm, God Himself said, if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. And so what does that say? It's saying get in or get out. If you get out, you're headed towards a damnation. You're headed towards a, a, a eternity in hell. But if you get in, you're headed for fire. Shut up in your bones. But a kind of fire that will keep you warm on the cold nights. A kind of fire that will light your way when you're lost and can't see which way to go. You're talking about the Spirit of the living God. But we need to get in yes. or get out. Yes. The time for playing is over. Yes, time is too short. Jesus is about to come back. We need to get in to the Holy of Holies and get next to God or get out. Yes. Now that's not going to sit well. I'm sure with some people that might hear that. But it's biblical. Yes, it is. I don't want to be lukewarm. No. I don't want somebody else doing everything and, and earning my rewards. No. But in the Holy of Holies is where the things of the Spirit take place. Yes. In the Holy of Holies <laughs> was where God dwelt. But God Himself said, I will dwell between the cherubs on the ark of the testimony on the mercy seat <laughs> in the holy of holies yes. is where the real things of the spirit take place and can I tell you in the holy of holies is where miracles still happen yes, why don't we see the miracles that we used to see because people are not pressing in to the Holy of Holies anymore. They get down on their knees and 
they pray their short and narrow lay me down to sleep prayers. But they don't press in to the Holy of Holies. They kneel down in the tabernacle of the congregation. And maybe they offer a little polluted sacrifice unto God in their little, their little, their little meaningless prayer that they don't mean from their heart. And they're just saying them because it's, it's an old habit they're monitoring. And it's a good thing to teach your children to pray. But it's a good thing to teach them that you need to pray with fervency of the Spirit and realize that it's an almighty God that you're praying to. Yes. And to have a fear of the living God. Yes. And the Holy of Holies is where the very glory of God dwells. <laughs> Brilliant <laughs> with its intensity. In the Holy of Holies uh, and only in the Holy of Holies uh, spiritually speaking can we have a service like we had here this morning. In the Holy is the only place uh, where we can come uh, into contact with the God uh, that is able to lift us up uh, out of the deep fiery clay and set our feet uh, up on a solid rock. It's in the Holy of Holies uh, that we find uh, that God will meet with us uh, and will direct us and guide us. It's in the Holy of Holies is where my God is and it's because that's where my God is. That's where I want to be. Yes, hallelujah. In the Holy of Holies, where we find the desire to get closer every hour of every day. We don't want to just maintain anymore, but the more I get of God, I found out the more I want. The more I, I get, the less I'm satisfied. The more I get, the more I want to dig and see if I can't get any more. Just get a little closer to the tabernacle of the Holy of Holies. In the Holy of Holies, this is a place where nothing else matters but God. Nothing else matters but God. God said, I have no other gods before me. He said, if you love your mother, if you love your daddy, if you love your aunt, your uncle, your brother, your sister, if you love anybody more than you love God, you're not in the place where you need to be. You cannot enter into the Holy of Holies with anybody else standing in between you and God. It's in the Holy of Holies that we find true spiritual enlightenment. It's in the Holy of Holies that we find peace. It's in the Holy of Holies that we enter into the presence of an awesome God. It's in the Holy of Holies that we find a holy God. It's in the Holy of Holies that we find a powerful God. It's in the Holy of Holies that we find our healing. It's in the Holy of Holies where we find our own salvation. It's in the Holy of Holies where I want to be. Yes, yes, amen. In the Holy of Holies is a place where we'll pray without ceasing as Paul talked about. In the Holy of Holies is a place uh, where we get into the Holy of Holies. We'll find that we are interceding for others like we never have before. We cry out for them earnestly. We cry out for them uh, on a regular basis because we know uh, that the kingdom of God is with man right now. But it's not. It's coming a time and coming a time very shortly when we're all going to be called away. And this world is going to pass away with the fervent heat the Bible preaches and the Bible teaches. And because we know that this world is close to an end, it's when we enter into the Holy of Holies and we begin to intercede for our lost love. Oh my God! Save my brothers! Oh my Lord! Save my sisters! Oh my God! Save my parents! Save my sons! Save my daughters! Oh, yes. It's in the Holy of Holies that we begin to intercede. Yes, that's all. Thank you. Oh, Talking about entering into the Holy of Holies. Yes, Lord. A lot of people got just enough salvation to make them miserable. They're lost. Uh, they to be lost in the tabernacle of 
in the Holy of Holies is a place where we have an uncommon love for others. Even our enemies. Even those that have looked you in the eye and go, you're the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Even those that have looked you in the eye and spit in your face. Even those that will, will wait for you to turn your back and stab you in it. Even there, even them, will we be able to love them when we come into the Holy of Holies? Why? Because in the Holy of Holies is a holy God. In the Holy of Holies is a loving God. And His love flows through us and therefore we can love them with an uncommon holy love. Yes, Lord. It's in the Holy of holies. We need to examine ourselves. Where are we at in this spiritual tabernacle? Are we standing outside? The old song says, standing outside the poor most. Standing outside the gate. Being denied entrance because we've never entered into the congregation. Never entered into the, the holy of holies. Uh, uh, maybe maybe uh, uh, entering into the tabernacle of the congregation uh, and, and getting saved. But yet not, not seeking the Spirit of God. Not seeking the Holy Ghost of God. Not seeking the deeper things of God. Content just for with, the, with what we hope is the prior insurance. Uh, content just to live our life and let others live theirs. But then I want God to look at me and say, Well done, my faithful servant. You have entered in to the joys that are late. Because I entered in to the Holy of Holies. Amen. Amen. In the Holy of Holies, this is a place where we just can't get enough of God's Word. Thank you. you want to know how close you are to God? When uh, I can tell you how you can find out, go through your house, look at all of your Bibles, see how much dust you can wipe off of. If you can wipe dust off of all of your Bibles, you're not entered uh, into the Holy of Holies. You're still living in the tabernacle of the congregation because when you enter into the Holy of Holies, the song says, I want to know more about my Jesus. I want to know more about my Lord. And when we enter into the tabernacle of the Holy of Holies, we find out that we care not yet enough of the Word of God. We find out that we're in God's Word every day of the week. Yes. Oh, preacher, you tell me that I need to study every day. I'm telling you, you need to study every day of every week of every year. Hallelujah. In the Holy of Holies is where we just can't get enough of God. In the Holy of Holies, this is a place where our testimonies just kind of erupt like a volcano yes. every time you think about the goodness of God. And that, you know the funny thing is, people don't even have to ask me about God. I'm constantly looking for ways that I can just guide the conversation right around to God. Why? Because in the Holy of Holies is where that spiritual water begins to bubble. And it's bubbling. The song says it's bubbling. It's bubbling in my soul. Hallelujah. And because it's in the Holy of Holies yes. it's where I find this living water out. In the Holy of Holies is a place where we can't help but lead people to God. Because we're concerned about their souls. And we'll ask them, hey, do you know Jesus as your Savior? And Jesus, uh, you say, you would actually, I have, and I do ask somebody that you say about every week. I'm not ashamed of the Gospel of Christ. Because I've entered into the Holy of Holies. See, I've been out there in the world. I've been out there in the tabernacle of the congregation. Even, and I know I, I, I dwell, I, I try to dwell as much as within me as possible in the Holy of Holies alone with my Jesus, with my Savior, and with my Lord. And I know what it's like out there. And I've lived the dry and the barren lands. And I've entered into the Holy of Holies. And I want to lead others to this place. In the Holy of Holies 
It's a place where we don't have to wait for the preacher or any good spirit filled Christian to pray for us. But it's always a good idea to ask for prayer. I, you know, yes, I, I desire everybody. I, I desire prayers in the Christian side. Yes, if I ever get to the point to where I'm thinking I'm big enough in God that I don't need the prayer of Christians, I want you to pray twice as hard for me because I'm going to need it twice as much. Yes. I desire the prayers of the Christian saints. But, but in the Holy of Holies, His Word, we don't have to wait for the preachers or the Spirit-filled saints. We can go into the... You know, the, the, the Catholics. Oh, man, I'm just going to get myself into hot water. But the Catholic, as I understand it, they have to go to a priest and enter into this little confessional and confess to a priest all of their sins, all their trans and the priest will say, bless you, my son. Can I tell you that's not worth a hill of beans? Who is man that man can forgive? Who is God? He's the one that can forgive. Yes, yes he is. Thank God. We are able to enter into... But it, back, back then it was not possible for anyone to enter into the Holy of Holies. Why? Because man was not holy enough mm -hmm. to enter into the Holy of Holies. That's right. There was one man that was ordained by God that once a year was able to go in there. Mm -hmm. And as I understand it, they tied a hoop or something around his ankle and put a bell around his neck and if that bell ever quit ringing, they knew that he had done went into that holy of holies and he was not he was not holy and God struck him dead so they could just pull him back out without having to go in there and die themselves. Mm -hmm. right. He's a holy God. A lot of people were playing around with him, trying to do this and trying to get away with that and, and trying to live this way and trying to live that way. But he's a holy God and he will not be mocked. That's right. Amen. In the holy of holies. Is where I want to be. It's where we can go without the aid of a priest praying us. You know, nobody can pray you. The, the priest, uh, the Catholics have a place that they call purgatory where they believe that, that when you die you can go and somebody can pray you through into the portals of heaven. Can I tell you? It don't happen that way. It doesn't happen that way. The Bible says as a tree line. So as a tree falls, so it lays. As, a, as you leave this world, that's how you're going to stand before God. Ain't nobody going to pray you through to heaven. Ain't nobody going to take you out of heaven and cast you into hell. Except God the Father if you've not been living for Him. Amen? That's right. So my question to us tonight is where are you at in this temple? Where do you abide in this spiritual temple? We read the scripture tonight. That getting back to not everybody was able to go into the Holy of Holies. There was a thick curtain, as I understand it, probably four and a half to five, maybe six inches thick, that separated the tabernacle of the congregation from the Holy of Holies. And only the high priest was allowed to go into the Holy of Holies in that one time a year. But thank God, there was a high priest born one day, a little bit over 2,000 years ago, and his name was Jesus. Thank God he didn't need a lamb somewhere, some spotted lamb or some lamb that had walked this earth to make a sacrifice for you and for me. He didn't use the blood of a lamb, but we were so precious to him and he used his own blood to offer a sacrifice for me and you that we could find life and find it more abundantly. Thank God on the way there he took a stripe, 39 stripes, for my healing and for your healing and that we might go free and that we might be healed to the name to the authority of His name. Yes. Yes. Thank God He didn't have to come to earth. He didn't have to be scorned. He didn't have to be mocked. He didn't have to be spit upon. He 
didn't have to be hit with a rod about his head and about his face. He didn't have to wear the crown of thorns, but he did. He did. Why? Because he wanted to prepare a way for us that we could go to the Father ourselves. Yes. And thank God he took it all the way to that old rugged cross. Yes. Spilled his life's blood for you and for me. Yes. And the Bible tells us that when his life's blood was spilled, the Bible tells us when Jesus looked up, he said, It is finished. Yes. And he died. The Bible says at that moment, the veil in the temple. <laughs> the veil in the temple was rent from it wasn't torn just a little bit so we could peek into the holy of holy. But it was rent from the top to the bottom. Why was that necessary? Because before it had been impossible for any man to come into the holy of holy, but through the power of his name and through the mercy of his grace. We now can enter into the Holy of Holies. We now can talk to the Father for ourselves through His name. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Question is, where do we stand? The way has been prepared. The veil has been rent. Where are we standing now? Are we still standing outside? Waiting on somebody else to pray us through? Are we inside the tabernacle of the congregation? Taking a little bit of step into the things of the Spirit, but not going too far. Because we're afraid we might learn too much and too much be required of us. Or are we standing in the Holy of Holies? God would have it. Hey, there's room. I know back in the biblical days there wasn't a lot of room in the Holy of Holies, but can I tell you, there's plenty of room today. Yes. And we need every one of us to be found in the Holy of Holies because we're in the tabernacle of the congregation. We're backsliding. If we're standing outside, we're backsliding. We need to be in the Holy of Holies. Yes. Letting God direct our every thought, our every action, our every footstep. Amen. Stand with me if you will.